we want to begin, we want to talk about First Peter, um, and we want to talk about what the Lord has for us in First Peter, but we're not going to get that, I mean, you know, without knowing the book of First Peter. I mean, Jesus said, search the scriptures, they are there, testify me. And he's standing right there, and he's telling them not to look at him, but to search the scriptures. And so I want to re-ask everyone, if you please, 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 and, and many of you already have, and you don't need this, this uh, exhortation, please read over the book of First Peter over and over and over and over. There's a reason for it, and the reason has to do with our charts and the chart that God gave me that will help us to understand the book quicker. It'll, it'll, what it'll do is it'll give us the tools, more tools uh, than, than what we have right now <clears throat> to be able to allow the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and therefore open our eyes and bring us, bring us in, not just to First Peter, but the heart of God for having Peter write these things and for the heart of God to protect this letter over centuries and centuries to reach us. And so, um, uh, so I want to I want to do a little more explaining about the chart. Last week we did a, a thing on the salvation of the soul. And if you remember, we had just like this one. We're going to talk about evil, evil doers, and and both of these are um, both of these we've gone over before, but not with this chart. Excuse me. And I think that this chart is going to uh, help us all the way through as the Lord leads. All right. So there's uh, you were sent a picture of this chart right here on your SMS -S text just in case you can't read this and of course this is my first moment to get out of the way so that you could but now you can't so you can look on your, your uh, text um, it, it's important it's not just a clever way of presenting the class or anything it I know the Lord gave me this and I know he gave it to me for you um, I mean, I wish somebody had a shared this with me before I went into First Peter instead of the agony that I went through trying to sort out that compared to what the way I'm used to with Paul. Um, but uh, one of the things that we've said is that um, that these uh, these words surround a central word, and they have certain um, uh, attributes that pertain. To that, just like last week when we had the salvation of the soul, and there was the being tried and the end and glory, and and we took last week we took all of those things off that chart because this is a magnetic board. We took them off, and we were able to place them within the corridor, so that you could watch and see that they f not only fit with that word, but they all fit somewhere within the corridor. Okay. Um, another statement that I had made was uh, at, along the way was that um, these are like a little family of words, and that was before the Lord gave me this chart. They're they're like a family. They testify one of another. They stand together. They they have truths that bolster one another as you go through it. And uh, so uh, if you are fully saturated in the book of First Peter, then some of these things are going to start, you know, just like fireworks, you know, before the 4th of July, going off that you may uh, all of a sudden realize it's not just that word, you know, it's not, not like the salvation of the it's not just that word in the first chapter that we believe the meaning of it. We are learning all of the words around it and how they testify of that. Same thing with evildoer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to read through certain scriptures in First Peter. <coughs> Peter. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to read through uh, 
1 Peter, parts of 1 Peter, and what are we going to discover? We're not just going to read the scriptures. We're going to discover these words surrounding the reality of an evil doer, doer and they are definitions, defining words of the central word and of one another. Now, I hope that's, you know, I hope this isn't complicated <clears throat> because it really is just, we're just picking one word and we're going to read the Bible and find the words that are around it. And these are the words that are going to show up. Okay, so let's try that. You have your chart. So I'm going to read and you see if, uh, if any of these words show up right around the word evil doer or do evil or evil. Um, and let's just, let's just see if this really is happening. All right. First Peter 2, 12. Having your, maybe I should do it like this. I did it last time and I was Mr. Sideways Man, but it helps me to, to point out. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, having your conversation, which we studied and know that to be your manner of life. Remember, we studied that and it's not talking about how you speak. The word conversation is the manner of life that you have. Okay, so having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Here it is conversation um, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, may uh, by your good works, which would be uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't see it here. There it is. Okay. Um, I shouldn't be touching this because I'll erase it too. Um, by your good works. So, so good works in Peter is in contrast to evildoers and the things that they do. All right which we will find out from all these other words what that really applies to, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Okay, this is uh, verse 14 now, still chapter 2, 1 Peter 2, 14. Or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, for the praise of them that do well or do good. And there's probably do well on here somewhere too, but uh, you will get it over here. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. Good works, do well, do good, conversation. All of that applies to the nature of Christ being in you, in the quarter, in the sufferings of Christ, where you are not um, railing back. You're not uh, speaking guile. You're not attacking them. You're not being an evildoer. You're allowing the lamb to be in you. Okay. So um, uh, the punishment of evildoers for the praise of them that do well. Okay. Now this is chapter three, verse nine, not rendering evil for evil. Okay. Not being evildoers or uh, rendering evil for evil is the process of, uh, of manifesting the works of an evildoer. Judging, condemning, uh, attacking, um, those kind of things. Okay. Uh, so, um, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing. You, they're cursing and you're blessing. Jesus said, bless those who curse you. He's saying, be with me in my sufferings while they're cursing you and bless those, bless the evildoer, but the evildoer will curse you. Okay. Um, but contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called that you, you should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil okay so and here's the do evil over here tongue refrain your tongue from evil so 
um, he could be talking to somebody in the corridor in the red alert zone that is on the verge of condemning or, or railing back or, or justifying themselves or doing anything opposite of what the Lamb did on the, on, uh, through the judgment and the trial and on the cross while He's going through that with you. And you're not allowing Him to be with you and you to be with Him in His sufferings in that way. Um, so, uh, refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Um, one of the things that you're going to find out a lot through here in these scriptures are this thing of uh, your mouth, or in this case, your lips that speak guile. It's a very common theme in First Peter. All right. Now, verse 16, 1 Peter 3, 16, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they're speaking evil of you, but they're doing that as evildoers to you, okay? Um, as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, okay? So, here it is, they're speaking evil of you, speaking against you, speaking evil of you, um, and they're falsely accusing you, uh, that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. So here's back to conversation, and that conversation is what's in Christ. It's not saying that, that you are uh, just uh, have a good manner of life in general, that manner of life is based on Christ, and that's ba and Christ is based on the Lamb. Okay, so um, verse, um, and this is First uh, Peter three eleven, if I'm not mistaken. I hope I didn't get this out of order. Let him eschew evil and do good. Okay, so here you have it, a, a God, not evil, not evil. Um, uh, don't do evil. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Now, the very next verse, 1 Peter three twelve, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So this is, this is as if God is talking here uh, about the corridor, which Peter is talking about that. He's talking about the sufferings of Christ. Okay? Um, so when he says uh, that last verse that I read, depart from evil and do good, he's not saying, well, as a Christian, you need to not go do bad things. Don't rob banks and, you know, don't, you know, lie to people. And he's not talking about that at all. When he talks about evil, he's talking about the things evildoers do, which they speak against you, um, they, um, uh, they render evil for evil, they falsely accuse, they use their tongue for evil, they do evil. And then this one, this roaring lion one, I put on there for a reason um, because um, we get already gave the explanation that the roaring lion was a person who was an evildoer. And the roaring and the thing that we're, he's going about to uh, destroy us by throwing all of this slander and all this stuff out, false accusations against us to get us to become an evildoer back and to do the same thing, maybe on a different level. We, we call it, um, um, what is it? Uh, uh, I can't even remember. It's a righteousness that, that, that is our own, and it's, it's okay. Righteous indignation. This is, this is, I'm not an evildoer. This is righteous indignation. No. If you're doing the same thing as an evildoer, but you're just pointing out their stuff, and while he points out yours, you're just an evildoer. God's not interested in that. But this is saying, this is referring to this corridor, that you depart from evil and do good, um, for he, 
For, for the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved. Actually, I think I jumped down to the Psalms on that. But it's, it's from that verse in Peter. Um, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers because they're praying because they're with the Lord and they're not just praying that the evildoer will be removed. Remember the salvation of your soul? It's not salvation from evildoers. He's praying that his soul won't get the better of him in this trial so that he can be with the Lord. He's praying like like if Peter understood all of this when he was with Jesus, then he'd be over there praying, Lord, don't let me deny the Lord three times. You know, don't let me cover up myself. Don't let me uh, uh, be ashamed of the Lord while I try to, you know, still look good. All those kind of things. All right. So, um, so let me give you a few evildoer scriptures in... Uh, in the Psalms, and we, we've done this before, uh, but we're trying to, to get it here, okay? So the, the goal would be to see some of these things here that are in Peter that have to do with the sufferings of Christ uh, and to identify that that's the exact same thing that the psalmist is going through, and Peter captured it. He got it. He, he, he gained it. He made it his own. And he understood what the process was. All right. So um, this is um, Psalm 34, 16. Listen carefully. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. We just read that. We just read that. Um, that's First Peter 3, 12. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. It's a direct quote. Uh, I'll just tell you right now, Psalm 34 is all First Peter. But I'm just showing you that there, you know, there's exact quotes. There's no question about it that Peter um, went, through the, went through this corridor and failed when he was with Jesus. And failed many times, you know, failed when... You know, uh, Jesus had to rebuke him over trying to keep Jesus from going through these sufferings and doing it to the glory of the Father. Um, but then he got into the Scriptures, and the only Scriptures they had then, they didn't have the New Testament, was the Old Testament. And he got into Psalms. And you, you read in the book of Acts, we mentioned this, I think, last week. First thing out of his mouth, basically, was he's, he's quoting uh, the Old Testament, of course, but he's quoting a lot of psalms, a lot of psalms. Okay, so um, the next one is uh, Psalm 37, 1, and Psalm 37 is also full of this, okay? So Psalm 37, 1, fret not thyself because of evildoers, okay? So you get in here, you get into the corridor, you get into, here's your, here's your evildoer guy. You see him, he's not happy. He wants you to suffer. He wants to ruin your reputation. He goeth about like a big sissy. I mean, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, but don't fret yourself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut off like the grass and wither as the green herb. Okay, they shall be cut off like the grass. They shall be cut off like the grass. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like the first Peter anywhere? Yes, it does. Um, and wither is the green herbs. Wither, there it is. Trust in the Lord and do good. In other words, you get into the corridor. Trust in the Lord. Don't trust in your own ability to justify yourself or to... You know, oh, I got more weapons than he does. He's an idiot for attacking me because I can make his life miserable. And there are people that more te people that will listen to me than will listen to them. Well, you failed the test. You failed the whole thing. It was a trial of the Lord to try to bring forth that uh, uh, fellowship with him in spirit. And you were too focused on yourself. Okay. 
Um, verse 7, still, this is, most of this is Psalm 37. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. He's prospering because he's making your life miserable. He's, he's ruining your reputation. He's getting people that you thought loved you on his side and all this kind of stuff. Um, and he's bringing wicked um, uh, devices to pass. Cease from anger. Cease from anger. Get with the Lord on this. And forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. It's in red right there. Don't be an evildoer. If you do evil, you're an evildoer. He's saying, no, be with the Lord. This is, this is greater things than just being a Christian in a trial. These are important things. These are... Um, well, I won't say that yet. Um, verse 9 of that. For evildoers, this is the very next verse in Psalms. <laughs> For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while. And inheriting the earth isn't that you're going to, you know, when this is all over with, you'll get Manhattan Island. Oh, this is great, you know, or something stupid like that. It's, it's relating to this. You got it here in the earth. You did it here in the earth. You did it in the worst trial. You did it when the, the evildoer was still around, goeth about seeking, trying to devour you. And you didn't let him break you from your union with Christ and break you from what the, uh, what the heart of God is for you by bringing you into this. At what he called you to. We haven't dealt with that word yet, but it's big. Um, in any wise do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. Um, and then just to show you a couple of other words here. This is verse, still 37, verse 12. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him. Well, you go, well, I'm not laughing. This is hard. <laughs> um, uh, for he seeth his day coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, have bent their bow, have cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as are of upright conversation, upright manner of life, being with the Lord in, in this trial, not, not letting the, the, the roaring lion scare you or make you fret, but make you, yes, you know, remember early on, yeah, there's, there's stuff that goes, you know, starts coming up in your mind over here in the first part of the corridor, and it gets hotter over here because the trial starts happening more. But then there's the, if you will, the, the gold standard over here where when we, when we come out, when we, we will be, as First Peter tells us, we'll be tried like silver. Our faith is, is at several different places. It talks about gold and silver. Um, uh, verse 27, and this is the last one in Psalms. Depart from evil. When you get in here, depart from all of that junk and do good. Do good. Remember, um, do good. Conversation. These are all in First Peter, and I'm reading. This is all coming out of Psalms, and they all, none of them have to do with the salvation of your of 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 being saved from hell. It's all. The fact, and then we dealt with that last week, salvation of the soul. It's all to keep your soul from, from turning into an evildoer or manifesting what it truly is by all of this reaction. And we say, well, I, I usually don't react that way. Well, do you think all that stuff? Do you, do you feel like you're righteous and stuff because you still think all of that? You just don't say it. Most people can't keep their mouth shut. They have to talk to at least one person and justify and prove to everybody that they really were righteous going through this. And, well, you've already done an evildoer act. 
you're already not being with the Lord in His sufferings. You're already worried about you, trying to justify you, trying to convince people. Part of the trial is that God allows it to look bad and go bad for a while. That's part of the reality of it. We'll see that more and more, but, but uh, we, we took down the salvation of your soul. And, and one of the words in that was that you're tried. You're tried that you may come forth as gold. You're tried. But gold is not sneaking around trying to make you look good. It's being with him in heart and in spirit. All right. So, uh, what time is it? Um, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put another chart up real quick. And it's going to be in connection with all of this. And I'm going to see if I can put it over some of these things. Oops. There. So the subject is Roaring Lion. That's funny. Okay. Okay. That's I wasn't planning on doing this exactly this way, but uh, I think maybe somehow I can pull this off, hopefully. <laughs> we got one guy that doesn't want to stick. Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, All right, uh, I'm going to go with what I've done right here. Hope this isn't confusing. I left, for the most part, everything on there. Uh, and I want to match them up. We talked about the Roaring Lion. Uh, you don't Roaring Lion, what is that? And we found out that it has to do with him speaking evil against you and uh, you being devoured. And uh, it's an evil work. And um, let's see, what else did I put on here? And here I had on the last one, falsely accused. This one is accused falsely. These are all the same thing. Okay, so um, we, uh, we, we just went over all this with the evildoer, with all of the stuff that he does with his mouth and everything. We get to the roaring lion, and we find out that he's got the mouth of a, you know, he's, he's got a, a devil dragon mouth, as it were. Um, and he's roaring things that will, let's see, where's that uh, one that I put up here? Uh, uh, whom resist, okay, resist him. Um, you resist him by going with the nature of Christ. You don't. You're, you're, see, in the Gospels, to resist the devil is to rebuke him and he will flee from you and a lot of that. Peter's not referring to that here. He's wanting the resistance to be that you don't have to be railed back. You don't have to uh, say all these things. You don't have to, you know, you're, you're like a lamb. The lion is roaring the lamb opened not its mouth. I mean, that's what we saw with Jesus. That's what we see in um, Psalm or Isaiah 53. We see the attack. We see the roaring lion. We see the evildoers saying, falsely accusing, speaking against you, against him, doing all these things, and he opened, yet he opened not his mouth. See, he didn't, you know, he didn't, he didn't have to do all of that. He was just in the spirit with the nature of the lamb manifested. All right. So that's what we're getting here. When he speaks against you, it can tear your soul. All right. Well, it may, you may be going into this corridor and you get just inside the red zone, if you will, and it starts tearing your soul. 
But that's not the end of it. Just because he's tearing your soul, just because he's accusing you, doesn't mean you have to give up on Jesus. Doesn't mean, in fact, Peter is giving us a beautiful opportunity to be with the very heart, the very heart of the Lamb, the very heart of what, what the Father wants, you know. Um, we don't understand scriptures like it pleased the Father to bruise him. We don't understand scriptures like uh, uh, the, that the Father, um, uh, he that spared not his own son, that's the Father, he that spared not his own son. Um, because Christianity has made us to think in terms of salvation, either being we get away from this world and the devil and everything in it, so I'm going to be saved out of here, and so the rapture is the answer, or um, we, um, uh, we're personally going through something and some body or bodies, some people join together and they become evildoers against me, and God deals with them and he destroys them, uh, you know, publicly or whatever. Um, and so we're so used to those kind of things that we can't understand First Peter at all. We can't understand Peter um, who is saying, go through this with the Lord. It's, and he's saying there's something higher in this than just God doing a miracle to get you free or something higher in this than just God uh, uh, bopping somebody on the head, you know, or chasing them off or whatever. And that is, there's something in the Father's heart in relationship to the way of, the, of Christ, the, the sacrifice of the Lamb, the, the uh, innocence of the Lamb, the um, unblemishedness, of the lamb. I mean, we, we always think that. We, we say, well, okay, the father, you know, in uh, Exodus, he examines the lamb that's going to be killed and the blood put on the doorpost. And so we look all over for a spot or blemish or something on him. But, you know, throughout the Old Testament stuff, they'd open him up and he'd examine to see if there's any default, uh, defects or anything on the inside. We can look good on the outside and have all these defects on the inside. This stuff is going to show what's really on the in, what is our insides. It's going to show if we got defects all over the place, because it just opens us up to and vulnerableness and um, um, not striking back and you know uh, beating our weapons into plowshares and all of that. Where like. Jesus, 2,000 years ago, we are going to be with him now. We say, you're real now. You're our life now. I want you now. And, but see, one of the things is to dig into First Peter. Let's find this. If it's there, if I'm, you know, if I'm telling you a bunch of bull, don't get on this again and See if you can get some evildoers to join together and get rid of me. But I'm telling you, this is something special to the heart of God. It's the gold standard to the heart of God. And Peter basically says that. And we want the Lord. We, we, we know what our heart would do in this without Jesus. It has to be his life, but it has to be with him too. We have to say, yes, be who you are, Lamb of God, in me, in this trial, and I will be with you. With you, Lamb. Slaughtered Lamb. In this trial. We don't know what that means to him. We don't know what that means to him. But apparently, apparently, you know, if it means a lot, then we want to give him that. Basically, it's giving glory to his son by being able to live in us this way. And it's giving glory to the father by giving him his slaughtered lamb son in the worst of trials.
Let's pray. Father, we love you so much and we don't know everything. We don't see everything yet. We're we're still coming, but we're coming. And Father, I ask you for any that are still struggling to understand this or to see this, to see First Peter, I ask you, I ask you to allow your Holy Spirit to go to them and to breathe the life of the book of Peter into them. And to not just see words and definitions, but to see what I call the quarter, what you call the sufferings of Christ and how important it is throughout that book that be, we be with the Lord in those sufferings. That's what the book always says. So, Father, we trust you, but we need you, and we need your Spirit, and we need the Holy Spirit to make it all eternally real in us so that when you examine the inward part, inward part you'll find truth there, not blemish, not evil doers or evil doing. We ask in Jesus' name. God bless you.